Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Busters. So we are at a really sad part right now, but we're gonna jump right back in. She lifted her head as though having noticed something. The white ones aren't fluttering. It would be more fun if they were. Onichan, let's play tag again. She giggled as she said that. No. Stop laughing like that. Stop making your eyes like that. Your eyes should be able to see so many awesome things, shouldn't they? Awesome things? Yes. I don't need them. All I need is you, Onichan. I wanted to scream out. Now her eyes were completely closed off from the world. You taught me so many great things. I don't know. I have no idea. That aside, I want you to tell me a story. Look, this book has lo or lots of stories in it. She showed me a notebook. That's a picture book you made yourself. I don't know about such things. I can't draw pictures like this. No. I won't accept this. I took her by the hand and left the roof. We're skipping the rest of the classes. You can, or you go back to your room and take a good rest. What are you saying, Oni-chan? I'm perfectly all right. You are. Your mind is not all right. On the way to the dorm section, we ran across Rin. Rin. I called to her. She turned to face us with the cling of the bell. Hi, Rin-chan. Yeah. Um, can you tell the teacher we're leaving early? How come? You guys sick? It's weird, isn't it? Oni-chan insists I rest, or I need rest, even though I'm this fine. Oni-chan? Anyway, we gotta go. Holding Komari-san by the hand, I began promptly walking away. <laughs> See you, Rin-chan. Every word Komari spoke felt like a stab to my heart. Once we reached the girl's dorm, I asked the dorm mother to take Komari-san to her room. Thank you for your assistance. No problem. Kamari-san, have a good rest, okay? <laughs> sure. You two look like brother and sister. I knew she meant it as a joke, but it still hurt me a little on the inside. After leaving the dorm behind, I dashed out of the school gate. I was going to see Kojiro-san. He was the only one I knew of who should know everything about Kamari-san. I really wanted to turn the situation for the better. Kojiro-san! I pounded on the door. Kojiro-san, it's me, Riki. I'm coming in. I entered before he could answer. He was staring out of the window. Didn't he notice me? Kojiro-san? I called his name yet again. A second later. It's just you, kid. You should be more quiet. You're all wet. Aren't you supposed to be at school? I need to ask about Kamari-san. What? Can you please tell me what made her like that? Calm down, kid. You need your wits about you if you wish to know the truth. How can I calm down? Huh? I staggered back. Did you calm down? Yeah. First of all, she'll return to normal in a few weeks. What? This isn't the first time? No. Anyway, first tell me the situation. I told him all I knew. What was the trigger? Huh? Did she witness blood? Or some sort of death? What do you mean? Those are her two triggers. I saw it in person. 
when I coughed up blood in front of her. <sighs> Nothing to worry about. I already had the tumor removed years ago. But Komari saw my blood and then burst into tears and broke down. It was something unbearable to watch. She started looking for her brother completely out of it. The next day, she forgot about the previous day and mixed reality with the day she shared with him. And then she gradually even forgot about that. And then she gradually even forgot about that. And then she other than that, the same thing happened when she saw a dead cat by a roadside, and when her fish died. She's kept repeating this over and over? Mm. Yes. That must be why nobody has told Komari-san about her brother's death. No. Even if somebody had told her, she would have definitely just forgotten about Flashback, it. Flashback, Flashback, I believe it was called. She feels anew the deep sorrow from her brother's death every time the trigger is set off. And with the passing of time, the feelings only become stronger. No way! Is this all because of what Takuya-san said to her at the very end? Even if she tries to run away, it keeps following her and will someday strike again. I couldn't imagine that was what Takuya-san had been hoping for. So does she think that you are her brother? Yeah. I see she likes you very much. Are you going to play the role of her brother? What? When she finds a suitable person, she will want to substitute her original brother with them. Do you think she'll stop being like that if I become a substitute? It just make her forget faster. And she would keep breaking whenever she faced one of the triggers. That's how it was with Komari. Eh? I mean my wife. I told you she and my wife are too much alike. His gaze drifted outside again. I used to be in the same spot where you are now. My older brother coughed up blood and died, much like Takuya. Kumari liked him. She was crying her eyes out and kept looking for him. I wanted to help her out. That's the same. That's exactly the same as what's happening with us right now. Soon after, she began to confuse me with him. By becoming his substitute, I tried to help her out. That seemed to work, and she went back to normal. I did believe that that time, that what I did for her was the right thing. However, it turned out that I hadn't solved anything. She kept remembering about him over and over again, and it wore, her, or wore out her mind. But that time, there was nothing else I could do anymore. But for her last three days, she recognized me for who I really was. Without those days, I couldn't have regarded her as my wife. In the end, I wasn't able to save her. Despite enormous time and effort, all I got from it was regret. It's an old story. Forget it. What if I refuse to be a substitute for Takuya-san? No idea. Not at all? 
She might stay as she is. Mata wa sureru to yu koto mo ari uru. Or she might forget everything. Dou suru? What are you going to do, kid? I thought playing Takiya-san would solve the problem, but I suddenly remember what I had told her. Can I be a substitute? I mean, a substitute for your brother. If dreaming of him makes you happy, I want to take his place and make you happy until you next dream of him, and even after you dream of him. What an idiot I have been. Running away won't solve anything. Kozo. Don't blame yourself, kid. But if I hadn't told her something like that, it's not your fault. If I had known the truth, she wouldn't have become like that, you think? I'm not saying that, but regretting won't get you anywhere. Then what am I supposed to do for her now and how? Kozo, I am a human being. Kid, I am the one who ran away. Not only once, but twice. Even the reason I came here is just to escape. Eh? No one knows what the future holds. What if I died right in front of her? Uh, At the very least, I don't think I will live longer than you kids. I suddenly understood. That was the reason why he's kept Komari-san away from himself. He must have wanted to see her and talk to her. I do have regrets. I can't help thinking there could have been some other way. So, there's no advice that I can give you. You have to deal with it yourself. But I don't know what to do. Who does? You can't take back the past. You can't do over what has been done. But... He makes it sound as though the cause of all this happening is that people loved each other. Takiya-san loved Komari-san deeply, or dearly, but what he did all for the sake of Komari-san has been crippling her instead. She loved him, but that's the reason she still can't forget about him, still needs him. And even the other people around her who love her haven't been able to do anything about this problem. Same goes for Kojiro-san. He's been living all alone, as or so as not to hurt Komari-san. I... I really like it the best when she smiles. I don't want to see her the way she is right now. That's it. Kojiro-san. Nanja. What? I'll figure out what I can do. Perhaps there is something only I can do. So ka. Got it. Sukutte yatte kure. Help her out. I will. Hanashi wa kore made jan na. This talk is over. Mo. You don't have to listen to any more boring stories of an old man. You mean you don't want me to come over here anymore? I don't want to leave any more things behind. I only want to pass away quietly without leaving anyone behind to remember me. I will. Decline that. <laughs> because I want to hear more of your stories. And I've decided what I'd, or what I'd like you to do in return. Please meet Komari-san. I promise I will prepare everything for you to meet her. <laughs> Kozoga. Huh. You sure say some things. Kangaeteoko. I'll think about it. Okay. Thank you for everything. I bowed my head and tried to leave the room. Mate, Kozo. Wait, kid. Eh? He stood up and walked up to me. And then he seized my right hand and stuffed a piece of paper in it. I'm finished. Hurry up and go already. <sighs> he kicked me out of his room. Outside the room, I checked out the paper. This says, what was written on it was the address and directions for a graveyard. Am I supposed to go meet Takiya-san? I'm going there. That's probably something I have to do. Like the other day, I took the same train that Komari-san and I had used and reached the same station at which we had gotten off together.
As the train left, the sound of the rain took over the landscape. I wish it'd stop raining right now, I thought, looking up to the murky gray sky. If only a wind had blown away those thick clouds and the sun had shed its light on that roof again, it would have been a wonderful place. All right, I made a strong nod to myself. I had no time to let the rain bother me. I opened the umbrella I had borrowed from the nursing home and left the station. Checking out the note given by Kojiro-san, I made my way to the or to where the instructions pointed. The town was strange to me, and no one passed me on the streets. I was all alone now. If I could walk together with Komari-san once again, we would surely be able to laugh away even this rain. I hasted my pace. I arrived at the graveyard under the heavy downpour. I guess that very few people visited here this time of June. My diagnosis was based on the tall weeds I saw growing here and there in the yard. Treading carefully, I checked out each one of the gravestones. There it is! I noticed there was a lump, or a stump, of a completely melted candle on the pricket. Or the picket, sorry. And I looked it looked like somebody had come to visit here before me and replaced the flowers. The flowers were yellow, uh, Kristen. I stood in the front of the grave. It was the place where Takuya-san was buried, or was sleeping. Sorry, he must have been the one person who loved Komari-san more than anybody else in this world. I joined my palms and closed my eyes in supplication. Takuya-san, Komari-san is about to lose her smile. What could I do about it? There was no answer. Perhaps, if he had been alive, he would have been able to see or to set her free from what was binding her. But Takuya-san was not here, nor was there anything more he could do for his sister. The, or that is why such things were happening. Why was the reality so cruel? I recalled the many pleasant memories of the Kamakita siblings she had shared with me. Those days would never come back. What on earth did I come here for? I murmured to myself. I didn't believe in another world where dead people would go. But if Takuya-san had been watching up or us from up there, he must have shared my frustration over not being able to do anything. Oh gosh, I'm crying, guys. Sorry. I had never wished in my entire life for somebody whose face I didn't even know to still be alive. In the end, all he had left was... Nothing but sorrow, wasn't it? This had been unavoidable. There had been nobody who could have done anything about it. I did understand that. Nevertheless, Komari-san had depended too much on Takuya-san. Hence, even if she tried to forget about him, she couldn't. That book about a chicken and a chick was the proof. What would Takuya-san do? What would he do if he were alive and saw his sister, sister right now? There was just one thing that came to mind. And that must have been what I was supposed to do. All right, I told myself with a nod. This was something I had to deal with by myself. Still, I didn't even know where to begin. One after another, raindrops were falling from my umbrella. Through those falling raindrops, I saw another umbrella. That silhouette. Kengo? M the umbrella faded away into the rain. Did I get the wrong person? I tried to catch up to him, but I couldn't. In the first place, it's not like Kengo would be here right now. I turned around, and I focused on where Takuya-san was sleeping. I'll figure it out, I told him, and turned back the way I had come. I'll figure out what I can do. Although I had made that bold declaration, I was low on ideas. But I really had to do something so that this wouldn't keep happening to Kamari-san. If I left her alone, she could be broken beyond repair. I didn't want to let that happen. Ever. What chains, or what chains her must be her feelings towards her brother. I needed to release her from her illusions. And to make her accept the ensuring grief. Or, not the ensuring, the ensuing grief. Could I really do that? Given that even I had still not fully come to terms with my parents' death, I still couldn't be too confident. I arrived back at our dorm room. There was a note from Masato saying, I'm staying at Kengo's room again. I was, or I really was grateful to him. 
because I wanted to think about the problem one or problem alone in peace. Well, but this is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.